I think we need to push back on this. There, there's no guarantee to free speech on misinformation or, or hate speech, and especially around our democracy. <laughs> well, there you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride chair extraordinaire. Your super duper Uber driver's here, guys. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor, hit the like, hit that subscribe, poor favor. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Hop on in, buckle in, and let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay, party people, welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. All right, Kim, folks, what are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? Man, so it's 2024, and there's people actually believe if they vote for Kamala Harris that she's going to give them reparations. I believe that $5 million in reparations is too little for the work that foundational Black Americans have done for this country and as well for other countries. I believe that $7.6 million is a number that can be used very wisely in our foundational Black American communities. 40 acres is also still a good idea, and instead of a mule, we would like a tractor. I also believe that we should know the name of all the companies that participated in the slave trade so we, foundational Black Americans, can start up our own companies. We should also be allowed to have a choice to learn our mother language other than Spanish or French in our educational classes. We have the Tut language that was started right here in America. During slavery, we have Swahili, Yoruba, Igbo, Zulu, and even Hausa. Community colleges and universities should not raise their tuition prices for the next future generations of each foundational black American family, and we should be able to change our names to our mother land names totally for free. All types of real estate should not go up in price, but it is our land that was supposed to be for us. But as we all know, it was never given. Now, let's say the government do give reparations. Are you qualified? What? Are you qualified for the check? Now, 2006, 2007, when Barack Obama was running and I had people shouting down on Facebook saying I got to vote for him because he's going to be the first black president. And I was like, well, there's two things. I'm not voting for him because he's a Democrat no. and he's not the first black president. All right. Now people are saying that his mom is white. His daddy is from Kenya. I get that. All right. His daddy comes in, have a one night stand and she had a baby. I got that. I understand that. His pigmentation is mulatto. He's black. I got that. But he was raised in Hawaii with his white grandmother. How many Jerome Jenkins do you know is from Hawaii? None. Okay? So he did not raise as a fundamental black American. Shout out to Tariq Nasheed. Now, he's the one that coined the term FBA. When I was saying this, I was saying that he did not grow up black as a black American, as somebody whose ancestors was a slave in America. Okay. Now his daddy is from Kenya. He comes in, have a one night stand and drop a baby. That is not the same as somebody who was forcibly came in in chains on boat ships, picking cotton for generations after generations from Alabama, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia. Those are the FBAs. Those are the fundamental black Americans that deserve the reparation checks. Now, if your mama, your grandma, and your great-grandma bought a passport from Jamaica or Haiti or Dominican Republic and comes here willing, willfully, does that mean you deserve the check? I have black friends from Dominican Republic always say, me not black poppy, me Dominican. I have a good friend in Miami. He's a dark-skinned Cuban. He always says, me not black poppy, me Cuban. You got uh, Jamaicans and Haitians and all of them. They always distance themselves from black Americans. They're not black Americans. I'm from Nigeria or whatever. But now all of a sudden, 
Now that you say you're black, you want to check. No, it doesn't go that way. No. I want to blame this on Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson is the one that kind of coined the phrase African-Americans. If you're here, you're an African-American. No. No. And there are a lot of people are riding, riding the bandwagon trying to be black American. But when the, when the shit hit the fan, they want to run back to Jamaica, Bahamas or whatever. Now myself, I'm a first generation Haitian. I do not deserve a reparation check. There, I said it. To beg Congress to deal with, with, with this custom, this treatment of anchor babies acting like the children of illegal aliens are, are, are American citizens. No, the 14th Amendment um, was written specifically about about former slaves. That's what it was about. Even the former clanner on the Supreme Court said, this is about freemen. This is about former slaves. They are citizens. They, they were born, they, they are citizens of the jurisdiction in which, in which they live. It is not about an eight month pregnant Mexican running across the border and dropping a baby. You really think that's what they were, the country was thinking about immediately after the Civil War. It is exclusively about black people. Cong you know who else this extends to? People like 50 Cent. 50 Cent mom is from Jamaica. Buster Rhyme. Buster Rhyme. His folks are from Jamaica. Chris Wallace. We have other rappers like Fat Joe. Fat Joe is not black. Okay, guys, I don't know why I keep calling him black. Um, DJ Khalid. DJ Khalid is Arab. He is not black. Here's another one for you. Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey is from Eritrea. He's not FBA. He's not black. He's not qualified for reparation. So anybody that falls in this umbrella you don't qualify so let's say there's 40 million black americans it's about 10 10 to 12 million slave descendants deserve to check you rest no because your mama came in here willfully your mama bought a passport from haiti and came in here got a visa overstayed her visa drop a kid and now you over here hollering and you want reparations. No, no. The entire purpose of affirmative action set aside um, um, civil rights laws, laws that limit constitutional rights to freedom of contract, freedom of association. All of that was to make up for the legacy of, of slavery and Jim Crow. So unless these benefits are going to, you know, roughly defined, um, foundational black Americans, the descendants of, of American slaves. So Kamala Harris, by this definition here, FBA, she was not raised in the black culture far as slavery, getting um, uh, released from slavery, picking cotton, all that, all that's included. Her mom's from India. Her dad is from Jamaica. Yes, she's dark skin. She got some pigmentation in her. I got that. But culturally, she's not an African American or black American. So to make the point that that Kamala isn't a foundational black American, I'm always pointing out to to black people. Um, hey, have you noticed Indians are getting all the good diversity jobs? What did we do to Indians? We didn't enslave them. I mean, most of these immigrants coming in, most are from 90% of legal immigrants are from the third world. Um, and mostly we've just run around saving them from earthquakes and tornadoes <laughs> and coups and starvation. You know, they owe us. We don't owe them. But to switch from the concept of integration and civil rights for black Americans to this BSE diversity, it's nothing but discrimination against white people. And Man, I hope this makes sense to y'all. Okay? Jesus Christ. Anyway, that's my thought for the day. If you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like.
hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> All right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And now you tethers, get your ass off my lawn. <laughs>